Hello everyone, hope you guys are doing well. We all know that war has long been a part of human history. Well, today, we're going to tell you guys about the Livonian War. This conflict was fought for control of Old Livonia, when the Sardom of Russia faced off against a varying coalition of the Dano-Norwegian realm, the Kingdom of Sweden, the Union of the Grand Duchy of Lithuania, and the Kingdom of Poland. So, let's get right into the reasons and the events of this historic conflict. The Hanseatic League had already lost its monopoly on the lucrative and thriving Baltic sea trade by the time the Livonian War broke out. While still active and selling well, it was now competing with European mercenary fleets, particularly those from the Dutch 17 provinces and France. The Hanseatic vessels were no match for modern warships, and because the League couldn't afford to have a big fleet due to a diminishing proportion of commerce, Livonian members Riga, Rival, and trading partner Narva were left without adequate defense. The most powerful navy in the Baltic Sea, the Danish Navy, guarded the Baltic Sea's entrance, collected tolls, and controlled the islands of Bornholm and Gotland. Meanwhile, Sweden had wanted to expand into Livonia before the Livonian War, but the Russian monarch intervened and briefly halted these plans with the Russo-Swedish War of 1554-1557 which resulted in the Treaty of Novgorod in 1557. The Tsardom of Russia had become Livonia's eastern neighbor by absorbing the princes of Novgorod and Pskov and had grown stronger after annexing the Khanates of Kazan and Astrakhan. The isolation of Russia from sea trade increased the confrontation between Russia and the western countries. The shallow waters of Tsar Ivan's new Ivangorod port, built on the eastern bank of the Narva River in 1550, were deemed unsuitable. Following that, the Tsar asked that the Livonian Confederation pay around 6,000 marks to preserve the Bishopric of Dorpat, claiming that when Pskov was an autonomous state, every adult male had paid one mark. The Livonians eventually agreed to pay Ivan this sum by 1557, but when they failed to do so, they were deported back to Moscow, effectively ending the negotiations. Ivan continued to emphasize that the order's existence required passive Russian support, and he threatened to deploy military force if necessary. He wanted to build a corridor between the Baltic and the new Caspian Sea regions because he believed that if Russia went to war with big Western powers, it would need modern weaponry. Sigismund II Augustus, King of Poland and Grand Duke of Lithuania, was cautious of Russian expansionist ambitions. Russia's expansion into Livonia would have resulted in a stronger political rival as well as the loss of profitable commercial routes. As a result, Sigismund backed his cousin Wilhelm von Brandenburg, Archbishop of Riga, in his disputes with Wilhelm von Furstenberg, Landmeister of the Livonian Order. Like the Duchy of Prussia under Duke Albert, Sigismund anticipated that Livonia would become a subordinate state of Poland-Lithuania. With little backing in Livonia, von Brandenburg was forced to rely heavily on allies from outside the country. Land Marshal Jasper von Munster was one of his few Livonian followers with whom he planned an April 1556 onslaught against his opponents that would enlist the help of both Sigismund and Albert's armies. Sigismund, on the other hand, was hesitant to take part in the action, believing that it would expose the Kiev Voivode ship to a Russian attack. When von Fürstenberg learned of the plot, he led a force into the Archbishopric of Riga and took Kokenhusen and Ronneburg in June 1556. Jasper von Munster escaped to Lithuania, but von Brandenburg and Christoph von Mecklenburg were apprehended and imprisoned at Ansel and Trident, respectively. 
the Pomeranian Dukes, the Danish King, Emperor Ferdinand I, and the Estates of the Holy Roman Empire, dispatched a diplomatic delegation to appeal for their release. Due to disagreements between Sigismund and the Danish envoys, a cross-party meeting at Lübeck to resolve the problem was cancelled on April 1, 1557. Sigismund exploited the assassination of his ambassador Lansky by the Landmeister's son as an excuse to invade Livonia's southern provinces with an army of 80,000 men. In September 1557, he compelled the rival groups at Livonia to unite at his camp in Pozwal. They signed the Treaty of Pozwal there, which established a mutual defense and offensive alliance, with the primary target being Russia. The Livonian Confederation's approach to the Polish-Lithuanian Union for protection under the Treaty of Pozwal was considered by Ivan IV as a cause for war. Livonia and Russia negotiated a 15-year truce in 1554, during which Livonia committed not to form an alliance with Poland-Lithuania. Ivan retaliated against the invasion of Livonia on January 22, 1558. Local peasants saw the Russians as liberators from German domination of Livonia. While Russian troops conquered Dorpat, Tartu, in May, Narva in July, and laid siege to Reval in August, many Livonian castles surrendered without resistance, such as Tallinn. Livonian soldiers retook Wessenburg, Rakvir, and a number of other fortresses with the help of 1,200 Landsknechts, 100 gunners, and ammunition from Germany. Despite German raids on Russian land, Russian fortresses such as Dorpat, Tartu, Narva, and many more remained in Russian hands. The Khan of Kasim Shahgali, together with two other Tatar princes, commanded the initial Russian advance, which included Russian boyars, Tatar, Pomisno cavalry, as well as Cossacks, who were largely armed foot soldiers at the time. During the operations of 1559 and 1560, Ivan won further ground. Russian armies attacked Livonia once more in January 1559. While Russia was fighting in the Russo-Crimean Wars, Russia and Livonia struck a six-month truce from May to November. In response to the Russian invasion, Livonia sought assistance from Emperor Ferdinand I, but was unsuccessful and subsequently turned to Poland-Lithuania. Landmeister von Furstenberg escaped to Poland-Lithuania. Gotthard Kettler took his post. The First Treaty of Vilnius, signed in June 1559, placed the lands of Livonia under Polish-Lithuanian protection. The Polish Sejm refused to sign the pact, claiming that it only applied to the Grand Duchy of Lithuania. Sigismund dispatched Ambassador Martin Volodkov to Ivan's court in Moscow in January 1560 in an attempt to halt the Russian cavalry's rampage into rural Livonia. Russian victories followed a similar pattern, with a slew of local campaigns and sieges in which musketeers played a crucial part in dismantling timber fortifications with the help of effective artillery. The Tsar's armies captured strategic fortifications like Felin, Viljandi, but they lacked the resources to take Riga, Tallinn, or Piranau. The Russians defeated the Livonian Knights at the Battle of Ergim in August 1560. The new King of Sweden, Eric XIV, turned down Kettler's appeals for aid, as well as a similar request from Poland turned down Kettler's appeal for aid. Kepler sought assistance from Sigismund. In 1561, the Second Treaty of Vilnius destroyed the weakening Livonian order. Its holdings were secularized and assigned to the Grand Duchy of Lithuania as the Duchy of Livonia, the Duchy of Courland, and the Duchy of Semigalia. Some Lithuanian nobles opposed the rising Polish-Lithuanian Union 
and offered Ivan IV the Lithuanian throne. The Tsar made this option public, perhaps because he was interested in the offer or because he wanted time to bolster his Livonian forces. Throughout 1561, both sides adhered to a Russo-Lithuanian truce which was set to expire in 1562. Soon, Denmark-Norway, Sweden, and Poland-Lithuania started intervening in Livonia, which led to a period of struggle for control of the Baltic. While the early years of the war were marked by intense conflict, a period of low-intensity fighting began in 1562 and lasted until 1570 when the fighting resumed. The Nordic Seven Years' War of 1563 to 1570 engaged Denmark, Sweden, and to a lesser extent, Poland-Lithuania in the Western Baltic, but Livonia remained strategically significant. Denmark and Russia signed the Treaty of Mozaisk in 1562, agreeing to recognize each other's claims in Livonia while keeping friendly relations. Sweden and Russia signed a seven-year truce in 1564. However, between 1562 and 1583, Poland, Lithuania, and Russia were at odds almost constantly. Following the expiration of a truce between the two kingdoms in 1562, border fighting erupted. After a two-week siege, the Russians invaded Lithuania in 1563 and conquered Polak in February 1563. Following that, Poland-Lithuania, Denmark, and Lubick formed an alliance against Sweden and Russia, despite the efforts of John, Duke of Finland, the brother of Eric of Sweden, to arrange an alliance between Sweden and Poland-Lithuania, which ended with his arrest and imprisonment in 1563. In 1564, Poland-Lithuania defeated Russia in two major battles at Chesinski and the Ula River, regaining control of their eastern border. In 1565, Ivan IV, Ivan the Terrible, had a nervous collapse, virtually dividing Russia in half. Seven years of instability ensued in Russia, which only came to an end after the Crimean Tatars sacked Moscow in 1571. Ivan was not completely absent from international affairs during this time. By 1570, he had enlisted Magnus, Frederick II of Denmark's half-brother, with an offer of the throne of Livonia under Russian protection. Magnus initiated an eight-month siege of Reval in August 1570, the first of a series of failed Russian attacks on the city. When Eric of Sweden was overthrown in favor of his brother John III in 1568, the power balance began to shift once more. He was now free to continue his friendship strategy with Poland and Lithuania. In December 1570, he negotiated peace treaties with Poland, Lithuania, and Denmark, potentially isolating Russia. In 1572, Russia launched a fresh invasion of Livonia, seizing Weisenstein in January 1573, although this was followed by three years of inactivity. This arrival in Poland-Lithuania was fortunate. Sigismund Augustus died in 1572, and Henri Valois succeeded him in 1573. He returned to France soon after to seize the throne, but was ousted in 1574. Stefan Batory was finally elected king in 1576. In 1577, he went to battle with Danzig for a brief time. The most impressive Russian campaign of the war was in 1577. It began with the fruitless siege of Rival in January to March of 1577, followed by an invasion headed by Ivan himself in the summer. He took Duneburg, Kokenhausen, and Wenden, the Livonian Order's official capital city, leaving only Riga, Rival, and Sel to resist the Russians. Rival with the help of John III of Sweden. Because of the battle with Danzig, Stefan Batory was first unable to act. 
Battery was finally able to return to Livonia before the end of 1577. He reclaimed Duneburg in the southeast corner of Livonia and went in in November 1577. In December, he reached an agreement with Danzig and was free to focus on Russia. He repulsed a Russian effort to recover Duneburg in 1778, while a counteroffensive reached Dornpat, destroyed a Russian army in Pernau, and even reached Novgorod. A large Russian army attempted to reclaim Wenden in September 1578, but was destroyed by a mixed Polish-German-Swedish force. The fight of Wenden was a pivotal battle in the conflict. Poland-Lithuania continued on the attack during the next three years, recapturing Pollock in 1579, Veliki Aluki and Kolm in 1580, and crossing into Russia to besiege Pskov in 1581-1582. During this time, a Swedish force led by Pontus de la Gardie recaptured Narva before crossing into Russia to seize Ivangorod. Finally, in 1582, the Yamzapolsky truce between Russia and the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth was reached after subsequent discussions headed by Jesuit papal legate Antonio Posavino. The Tsar was humiliated, in part because the truce was requested by him. The deal called for Russia to hand over all of Livonia it still controlled, as well as the city of Dorpat, Tartu, to the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, with Polotsk remaining under Commonwealth authority. The Russians may keep any acquired Swedish territory, including Narva, and return Veliki Luki to Russia from Battery's administration. The conflict with Russia came to an end on August 10, 1583, when the Tsar signed the Truce of Plusa with Sweden, following John's decision. The majority of Ingria was relinquished by Russia, leaving Narva and Evangorod under the Swedish administration. The Russo-Swedish truce, which was supposed to last three years, was later prolonged until 1590. Sweden made extensive demands for Russian land, including Novgorod, during the negotiations. So that is all the time we had today, folks. Hope you enjoyed this video. Do not forget to hit the subscribe button and do click on the bell icon to remain updated about all our future videos. See you all next time, folks.